Okay, we're back. We're live. It's Monday. It's indeed a Monday. We're still getting over what happened last Tuesday. Oh, we have a special guest, David Farmer. He's an actor um, and a lawyer, too. And he is a member of uh, the Screen Actors Guild and AFTRA, AFTRA um, which is the, um, let's see, American Federation, American Federation of Television and Radio Television Artists. Radio Artists. Yeah, okay, it's very important. Yes. And it's a local right here. Yes. But one day, who knows, he could be the president of the National Combined you know, Organization. You know. you know, if Trump can get elected, anybody can. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and, and he made a movie we're going to talk about today. Toto was made in the Philippines. Very yes. interesting. And it played at the Hawaii uh, Film Festival, International Film Festival. And also it won some awards in New York. We're going to talk about that. Yes. Um, but, you know, first I'd like to just get your take on the, on the Trump thing. Because Trump had an effect on the Hawaii International Film Festival. What was it? Well, the, uh, our show, uh, we showed on uh, last Friday and Saturday. And we had disappoint. We, we had, there were good audiences, but it was a disappointing turnout. And in talking to the volunteers, they made this observation, that attendance, because usually HIF is well attended, uh, not all the films, but usually most. And uh, the last time we took a film from Philippines here, it was a couple of years ago, Full houses on, on both on both shows, uh, and similar time slots. But prior to the election, the volunteers told us, typical good size houses for most of the films. After the election, they it dwindled, and the sense was our Friday showing was on Veterans Day, so maybe there's a pass on that. But that in general, the post-election houses were very much smaller, and as you and I talked about briefly just a while ago, uh, it, I think, uh, has to do with this post-election malaise and, you know, postpartum blues that I think all of us, most of us anyway, are, are feeling as a result of yeah. the election. Yeah, yeah, see what happens now. And, and we don't know which way this is going to go, so we could have a, a long time of postpartum blues yeah. or hopefully maybe better short time. Anyway, this movie, Toto, was shot in the Philippines. It's a dark comedy drama, and it swept the awards at the 41st um, Metro Manila Film Festival New Wave competition, including a special jury prize, best director, well, it's terrific, David, best supporting actress for Bibeth Orteza, Orteza, yeah. Orteza. And best supporting actor for Thu, Thu Reyes. Thou, Thou. Thou Reyes. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's currently touring the festival circuit around the world. Um, and, uh, oh, gee, um, you, you got an award, too, including the Audience Choice Award for Best Film at the 39th Asian American International Film Festival in New York. Yes. What a deal. Yeah. And you played the role of a... Um, nasty a, immigration officer. A nasty immigration officer. It was a stretch. Officer. It was a stretch. You had to work on that one. <laughs> yeah, man, I had to practice that long. Uh, yeah. So uh, tell us how your career got you into this movie. Well... Let's see. Um, the, the, uh, I guess the uh, most recent Filipino facet of my career uh, started out with, uh, we've traveled, my wife and I, is, my wife is from the Philippines, we travel every year uh, and stay usually a couple of months. Uh, we, uh, she reconnected with a auntie uh, through Facebook, uh, of all things, uh, and she, um, uh, BK Jimenez is her name, she was uh, in the back in the day the sort of Luella Parsons of the Philippines, uh, and she's still somewhat somewhat. Uh, she's in Canada now, but she also still travels there. So she hooked us up with uh, Bebeth Orteza, who is known as a comedy in her own right, a comedy actress, but also a writer and a director. And so that led to two appearances on a show called Vampire on Dadiko which is My Daddy is a Vampire. <laughs> I played a visiting vampire by the name of Uncle Lucio, complete with teeth. Um, so we did that. Uh, and, um, and then um, her husband taught at uh, NYU Tisch Asia, which has since been closed, but it it's in Singapore. And uh, Car uh, uh, Car Carlos' uh, prime student was John Paul Sue, who is now more based in L.A., but L.A., New York, both. And he, this was his first uh, feature film. So as in all things, you know, from Hollywood to the Philippines, 
it's all it's not what you know it's who you know mm -hmm. and so that those connections turned into uh the two television and this film uh and perhaps more uh, as we go back uh, on thanksgiving it's like developing any career i suppose it's who you know and it's um, it's a tree. Exactly. And all the branches of the tree take you somewhere. Exactly. Exactly. We don't do it by ourselves, no, no matter what no. it is. You sit at home. They don't. They, they don't necessarily yeah, no, call you. Yeah, the phone you doesn't right. ring. It doesn't. You know, it's <laughs> terrible. But <laughs> so this is really interesting. That um, you know, it, so you're a um, an over the hill immigration officer, a nasty immigration, yes. American immigration officer, stationed in the Philippines. Correct. It's been this plot. The whole movie is English, I take it. No, the whole uh, the whole film is Tagalog with subtitles, um, but also it's it's not pure Tagalog. It's what they call ta Taglish, which is where it's <laughs> blah 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 blah, and an English phrase will drop in. And yeah. I'm fascinated by that to figure when wh what's the shift, what's the call, of the shift from one to the other. But you know, uh, the Philip they say about Filipinas, 300 years in a convent, 100 years in Hollywood. But it's also <laughs> the most literate country in Asia, uh, both in its native tongue as well as in English. So you can almost, to a person, find somebody who can speak English. Uh, in the Philippines, where maybe in the provinces a little bit less, mm -hmm. but certainly in Manila. Uh, so, are movies big in the Philippines now? Huge, but they also are going through what our industry in this country is going through, which is a whole, uh, I want to say, crisis really of new media, internet, the brave new world of all of all of that, and how not so much pictures are produced because that you know through. Uh, uh, the the uh, you know digital uh, uh, camera social media and all well, that. well that and also uh, but it's the um, it's it's getting distribution is still mm -hmm. the name of the game and finding the audience and yeah. so, certainly social media uh, this film has has its own Facebook page uh, and uh, it'll have the film will also have its Op uh, official opening in, in uh, November 23rd in the Philippines. There's one more showing uh, on Kauai on uh, the tw 20th, next Sunday at 7.15. And so Where? In, um, it's the Kauai Waimea, uh, it's either auditorium or theater, but it's in Lahui. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, it, again, if, if folks want to double, double check that and get tickets, uh, Hawaii International Film Festival webpage has all the information and ticket availability and all that. So there is a, a large uh, Filipino American community in Kauai, so we're you know hopeful that uh, we get a good turnout. And we also had a, a, a vast contingent come here for uh, the Honolulu showings. Um, Beth Orteza, John Paul Sue, um, one of the producers, Donald Martin. Uh, it's a true story actually about a fellow who goes through every scam you can imagine of phony family of, of just and tried in real life seven <laughs> times with this and failed 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 <laughs> until finally uh, uh, he got someone who was willing to hire him as a caregiver for his mom and um, and so uh, Francisco uh, the the real Toto uh, it's it's all his story, but done with uh, you know uh, certain embellishments and and that it's a, it is a fiction film, um, but so he was there. Uh, uh, the uh, uh, actress uh, who played the major sort of uh, L.A. Uh, bad, baddie taking money for you know uh, without any return, uh, and uh, so it was. It's it's been a great uh, pleasure to kind of host them. First time in Hawaii for many of them. Uh, and you know, this whole thing with, with uh, I think both Australia and New Zealand, well, especially New Zealand and Philippines, have vibrant film production. And the connections to Hawaii are so palpable. And, but over the years, it's kind of like it's been hit or miss, you know, boop, 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 and yeah. not anything really, you know, solid. Yeah. So hopefully that this might be solid. Well, this you know, and and they are also talking. One of the things that's driving the industry now, the film industry, are uh, film credits. Uh, states competing with with each other with film credits, and we've been. What, is, what does that mean? Well, you get a tax credit. Uh, oh sure. Yeah, okay. yeah. Uh, for different states have different amounts. We've been blessed with a good one. 
Uh, it's controversial still, I think, because people don't understand it. They think we're kind of, you know, robbing our tax revenues. But the money we bring in as a result, uh, and it's so much so that we as a union are going to be looking to the next legislative session to actually extend. Um, when you're doing a film, because we've, we've had, you know, Mike and Dave need wedding dates was shot here up at Turtle Bay. Uh, and so we have films that come in, uh, but um, it's the episodic television. And we're now in the seventh year of uh, Hawaii Five O, with the feeling that the eighth season might be really going to be on the burner. Yeah. And so these tax uh, incentives, these tax, you know, breaks, need to have a, a shelf life more than just um, you know two or three years. But you know, Atlanta is very busy not right now because of the tax incentive there, um, and right, you know. LA production is actually kind of down from be, because of because all everybody's the, doing it somewhere else. It, it, in your eyes, it's a huge competition it, all over. It is. And it if is. we don't watch out, Puerto Rico will have will have really good scenery, and we'll lose all our scenery shooting to Puerto Rico, which well, happened already that's, in a couple of movies. That's that's true. And uh, uh, I guess the only still in, between the travel costs, and I'm not sure what kind of on the ground uh, technical. Uh, talent they have in Puerto Rico, but you have it, it, more travel costs from LA. Uh, because what's interesting with all these productions, uh, you know, New Orleans, uh, Atlanta, North Carolina, at least unless they get their LGBT uh, law straightened out, they may lose, you know, uh, work over there because, you know, producers are saying, look, we can't work under these conditions. <clears throat> it's an international industry. You can go anywhere, do anything. Absolutely. You know, if you can dream it, you can do it, and movies will deliver it to the world. Yes. And we live in a world that, you know, is enhanced by only... And um, when we come back from this break, David, mm -hmm. I like to explore your character. Okay. Your immigration <laughs> officer character. All right. How you shaped that, how you acted that out. Mm. Ooh, I can Ooh, hardly process. wait. He's going to give us the lines from the movie. Wow. Because he remembers them. <laughs> it's David Farmer, an actor and a lawyer, talking about a movie he's in. Toto, a Filipino movie. We'll be right back. Hi, I'm Donna Blanchard. I'm the host of Center Stage here on Think Tech. On Center Stage, I talk with really amazing artistic guests about what they do, how they do it, and the most important point, why they do it. I think, I hope, the show is inspirational for everyone. I know it's always inspirational for me. I'm also the managing director of Kumukuhua Theater, which is right next door, and I happen to have with me now Will Kahele, who is an artist. We just finished a conversation. I hope you can catch on center stage. And we work together at Kumukuhua Theater. Why should people come over there? Because it's a great place to see uh, plays written by uh, local playwrights. Why should people watch this show? Oh, because um, because it's cool and it's uh, great things to know every week, and because you know you are a very cool hostess. Oh, that's perfect. Thank you. Give me my money. <laughs> my money. Here you go. We're back. We're here with David Farmer, an actor and a lawyer. And he's in a film called Toto. We can take a short clip from that film, oh, okay. the, the trailer, trailer, and take a look at exactly what's happening. And we'll come back and we'll talk to David about his role. And why do you want to visit the United States? To go to Disneyland. Children, God bless them. Di ba sinabi ko naman sa'yo, yung mga puting yan, bibigyan ka lang nila ng tourist visa pag na-fail nila na galing kayo sa isang disenteng pamilya. Disente pamilya ko. Sige, ang giti nga po kayo. Nalil! Yung nakatikong po yung nilabi. Mga konting pasensya lang. Matutok kasi dumis karte, katulad ko. Next! Room service. Miss Porter, you are American, yes? Will you marry me? So it's pure business. If you insist, we can have sex, it's okay with me. Good evening, sir. You are from America? Texas. Oh, cowboys. I love cowboys. I like Asian. W would you marry me? Excuse me. Ito, hindi ka na itong pinasok mo. Saan mo nakawa natin yan? Ito natin! Nino yung mga babae na karasyon na imo. Nino! Magdating naman sa Amerika. Ah! Walay ka pa takakuha yung leksyo na tabaw eh, imo tatay. Tapos ng lahat ng pinagdaanan. Ngayon ko pa ba, Josh? So 
What's your name again? Atoto. You complete me. <laughs> David, it's a lovable, <laughs> lovable trailer and a lovable movie. The characters are all lovable, even you. Well, you know, I, you know, I'm one of the darker colors, but uh, and as far as the lies, you heard them all. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, well, you know, one one thing is clear is that it, it's an insight into the Filipino culture today, definitely, and life in the Philippines. It's funny, it's warm, it's witty, exactly, and it's got it's got a je ne sais quoi about about um, you know about the the Filipino culture and how appealing it is to you. Yes. I mean I always liked the Filipino culture a lot. Well, and and the absolute resilience of the people. I yeah. mean this is set around the uh, post Yolanda in Tacloban. Um, although it was actually shot somewhere else except for a couple of scenes. But uh, but yeah, I mean this is a a people, a culture that takes it on the chin in so many ways and now they have a president from hell uh, <laughs> <Getting> in trouble <laughs> with everybody uh, yeah might as well have an equal opportunity insulter here but um but they come up they get back up with smiles on their faces and it's legitimate i mean we talk about aloha spirit but there is a spirit very very warm spirit with the, the filipino culture and people that um uh, i mean my extended family now is in the philippines you know so Right. Yeah. So, I mean, to me, I, 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 the humor in this trailer is really funny. Yes. It's not just you it's know, not way off in the distance. It's really funny. It's and, now. Yeah, and I have to say that there is a certain, you know, Filipino cinema has a reputation of the, uh, either being what's called poverty porn, which is, you know, all the poor, you know, and poverty isn't an issue. There's not to minimize it. Or slap around, boop, you know, violent stuff, mm -hmm. or... Dumb, dumb a you know, pardon you know since we're on you know, um, <laughs> comedy slapstick stupid comedy this is a very sophisticated film yeah. and in part because the writers and directors uh, have been exposed to more than just homegrown s sensibility director is a graduate of NYU Tisch Singapore uh, he this is his second film his first film was called Pug Pug which was about a, a poor people living on the sort of trash heap of, of and Bibeth Orteza was in that one as well. But this is his first feature. And uh, it's an international quality, you know? Yeah. And you know, as far as our industry and, and our American industry, most of our income comes from foreign distribution. Our domestic market still is there, but the- People mo around the world, yeah. That's right, that's, that's right, including China. Right, yeah. and it's not only in movie houses; it's in every media, really, including your telephone. Exactly. Exactly. So, what? So, why is this movie winning so many awards? Would you say? I mean, what? How would you? Uh, how, what? What? You know, quality do you find in this movie that makes it so popular? I think t two two things. One is it's an immensely human story. It's a story that especially uh, uh, Filipinos and Filipino Americans can relate to. That is the American dream, and. The other thing is about it, it's with all of the nasty discussion about immigration and our immigrants, we a uh, nation of immigrants, um, Truly. it's a, it's a feel-good story because, okay, uh, uh, Toto goes through this, the scam route and, and tries... The scam is an intellectual experience for the audience to follow. Exactly. This is not unsophisticated, the scam. No, no, it's pretending here's my family and here we are and we have fake paperwork and da-da-da. <laughs> And, you know, my role as the, uh, you know, dog at the gate is to say, uh, deny, 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 with relish. It's the only relish the guy has in his life, is saying no. But ultimately, uh, he, he is redeemed because of the kindness of the, uh, uh, of the actor that uh, you, see, you saw, Blake um, Boyd, who is uh, also a sag after uh, actor, and, um, and he's able to do it legitimately. So on all levels, both the struggle, the hum human struggle, the humor of it, as well as the ultimate outcome, it's a feel-good movie. It's great. Yeah. Let's talk about you for a minute. <clears throat> okay, so um, <clears throat> how did you get into this role? I mean, what I mean yeah. by that is you have to get into it, right? You have yes. to become the immigration officer. Right. And, and mean and nasty. And, right, and right. say no all the time. Right. Well, uh, actually, I, I auditioned via Skype. Oh, really? Uh, with uh, JP and Bibeth. Yeah. Uh, so I'm here and they're in, in Manila. Uh, 
But uh, JP was very uh, clear from the get-go of who this person was and what he wanted the screen to see. That this was a you know a career, uh, probably mid-level civil servant, burnt out on the Philippines, burnt out on his job, a miserable human being uh, who just parking time until he gets his pension and get the hell out of out of out of Manila. Uh, and so I. With some of my state service um, uh, uh, history, I could relate <laughs> to that. <laughs> I, I won't elaborate. No, we don't need any more. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Understood, right? But um, so that actually that was part of the prep was to to having observed the folks of that uh, uh, description, um, and, and then but you know I mean. I, I would say, as most people would say, I, I'm, I'm a mensch. I'm, 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 I don't have a nasty bone in, in my body, except when people <laughs> make me angry. <laughs> but, 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 but so it was. But, but no, <laughs> David's a terrific lawyer too. You know, <laughs> you don't want to be adverse to David. <laughs> anyway, you go right ahead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you know, if you're if you're paying me, I, I'm, <laughs> I can get on the job. But the. Um, uh, the adjustment, uh, but also too working with that, you know, that, that the family group that was in, that's in the trailer, uh, and you know, the, just we we had to keep straight faces for for a lot of it because you know it, it was just um, humor humor on the set humor on the set good nature on the set exactly. And so how do you you know how do you do that? How do you make yourself like that when it's not really you? And and tell me how did you express you know I mean what are your lines? Well, uh, you say you heard probably most of them. <laughs> uh, the longest, the longest line was um, um, the guy uh, asks me, "Well, how, why did you reject me?" Right? And I said, uh, "23, uh, no job, uh, not much in the bank, uh, denied. Uh, why don't you go to Hong Kong Disneyland? You will see a lot of Mickey Mouse there. Because the idea is they're going to go to Dis Disneyland. That's why they're applying for a visa." <laughs> Right, <laughs> heaven protect me. <laughs> so, yeah, that, that, that's uh, so. I'm feature. I'm in the beginning, right at the beginning, and then at the end. Uh, now, now this guy is, is legit. Toto's legit, um, and he's coming with his papers. And there's a lady, a lady immigration officer, Filipina, uh, and much uh, nicer demeanor. And then I come in, and I, I, I'm, I look over, and and then I whisper in her ear, and it's like. Uh oh, he's going to poison the wall, you know, because he's seen this guy several times. Yeah. Walks out, looks at the paper, accepted. So you didn't poison. No, the, didn't poison. The well. No, no, no. It was a little so bit of a. So you turned out to be a good guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Or just blind. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, what, is, what does it teach us about the immigration process in general? Um, there you are, you're an American immigration officer, but with a, with a desk, so to speak, and processing papers right. in Manila, I Correct, guess. correct. Yeah, yeah because it's, it's uh, the Department of Homeland Security. So and they, these are they go out into other countries. Yes, yeah. yeah. So, uh, and I think they hire, um, as, as the film shows, they hire both uh, local uh, people as well as uh, imports from the United States. But, you know, I briefly uh, did a little immigration work. We're talking now here maybe 15 years Lawyer ago. Lawyer immigration. Lawyer immigration work. And I had the experience of taking a lady down who had family here and stuff, uh, but she was undocumented. So we went down for a interview. And as I remember, it was maybe early afternoon. <laughs> they kept us there until about 6 o'clock. <laughs> And then they scooted her out to the airport prison for a bag and baggage order to send her away. And that experience was enough for me to go, forget about this kind of practice, because my view is that immigration, ironically, uh, is racist. You know, if you're coming in from Ireland or France or Italy, you've got a much better chance than you do from anywhere in Asia. And uh, so, you know, our... Our immigration system is very, very flawed, and it's going to be interesting to see what are the promised threats uh, that have been made this last campaign yeah, cycle. Yeah. Will I already happen. know how you voted, yeah. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> 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 you see my underwear or something? 
how spooky. <laughs> so tell us, you know, I mean, what it's like. I mean, you, so you have very few lines, yep. which means that, you know, the, the actual time on screen is not that long. That's right. Uh, is it worth doing this? Is it fun doing this? Um, is it, you know, highly compensable? Um, or is it just that you want to be involved it's the in love the of mix? It. It's, yeah. it's the love of it. And, and the other thing is, too, you know, you don't get to be uh, Brad Pitt overnight. Even... <laughs> Brad. But we're working on it. But hey, you know, if we can do it, fine. But uh, so you have to pay dues. There's a, I um, did a workshop. Literally. On, yes. Yeah. Li yeah, literally. <laughs> Although when you reach 70, even the union, you don't have to pay dues anymore. Oh, interesting. As long as you've been in you the union at least 15 stay years. Stay with it. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, but I was at a casting workshop with the lady in uh, Jennifer Cooper. She does casting for LA, in, in LA for Hawaii Five O, And, um, you know, uh, her, she, she gives this insight uh, that, uh, you know, casting directors make up their mind within the first four to six seconds, you know, and they want to see who, the uniqueness of who you are. But to prepare for that, I did a, a monologue from The Verdict. Remember that Paul Newman film? Yeah, sure. David Mamet script? Sure. Wonderful. Really important film. And his summation speech is, is like less than a page. Right. On, on camera and play time, it took three minutes because, to me, best work Paul Newman ever did. That scene. That scene. Yeah. Uh, well, and that, that, that role, yeah. you know, from this down-and-out pinball-playing guy in a bar uh, uh, on the rocks. And, in fact, I was in law school when that came out, and I, I, I swore to an internal little, little, little promise to myself that when I woke up uh, in district court, uh, hungover, uh, I, would, <laughs> I would bail the profession. That's, that's never happened. <laughs> <laughs> but that speech is, is, is wonderful because it's all about, um, you know, it, 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 we, we're, we're lost, you know. Most of the time we're lost, right? And we, there's no justice, the rich win, the, but it was so timely. He nailed it. He, he nailed it. And also in consideration of what we've been just going through and are still going through was inspirational. Yeah. Inspirational. Yeah. Yeah. And that got you the role. Well, got me uh, some nice remarks from a, a casting director, but she was a, she was a, a, a wonderful resource. She was very um, uh, helpful in what she saw and what she communicated back. And to a person, she was very positive. Yeah. And with actors, you have to stroke them; otherwise, oh, sure. they get I mean, ornery. It's all about your self-image and all that. Well, that's right. So, um, with all of that in mind, uh, I have to ask you this question. What's, this what's is next? my final question. What's right. Next? Yeah, what's next? Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, I ask, I ask myself, too. Um, well, 5-0, I've done 5-0, but you only get one turn in the barrel because the producers w don't want the s viewers to say, hey, I saw that guy. It wasn't him. Yeah. Da, 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 da. So, yeah. so one, one time in, in the barrel, unless I become recurrent, it doesn't look like that's happening. Um, they are uh, several projects. Don Martin and John Paul are under consideration. Uh, m my wife is, is a behind-the-camera uh, lady. She, she, she doesn't like to be the center of attention, but uh, she's so turned on by this whole process that she's planning to invest in the next, uh, in, in the <laughs> next project. So we'll see. One of them is a very interesting uh, story about uh, the, at the time of World War II, uh, um, Philippine president who basically sheltered uh, uh, Jews fleeing from Europe and from China. And it was actually in terms of the numbers of people that he saved, uh, it was incredible. And that, that's a, a, not widely, it's a kind of, it's an Asian Schindler's List. Yeah, I want to see that. I want to see this. Yeah. I want to see you on film. All right. Thank you, David Farmer. I appreciate it. Great to talk to you. Always. <laughs> <laughs>